I trust that you're doing well. It is an opportunity that God has granted us <clears throat> again that we are meeting this day. Um, I pray and hope that all is well with you amidst um, the tribulations, you know, the epidemic that the world is going through. Um, I have prayed that God will keep you and your family safe um, and sound. Now, there, there are many things I know. Uh, we just coming out of um, a period when most of us uh, in the Christian world remembered the crucifixion and uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But again, the, the message of the Quran is in denial of this. Today, I just want to, look, to lay a foundation and I'll be taking calls uh, uh, for if you are my Muslim friend and you want to, you know, uh, come and, and, and give us your part. If you want to also share your mind on this subject, I would, I would love to hear from you. Um, I'll be just looking at the message of the Quran shortly and um, just laying a foundation for what does the Quran say in my perspective in regard to this topic. I know there are many things that have been said all over. Now, generally, uh, Jews, although they do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, they do believe that indeed he was, indeed he, he died. They, they crucified him. Um, the Christians unanimously, despite the differences in, in theology, despite the many uh, denominations within the Christian world, all the Christians do agree that Jesus Christ died and on the third day he rose again. The Muslims on the other end, the majority, uh, the Sunni and Shia would hold to a position um, to about three or four positions, uh, and I'll be telling you about them. The majority hold on to what we call the substitution theory. This is the fact that uh, Jesus indeed lived, Jesus indeed is the Messiah, and there was a day that indeed the, 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 the Jews planned to kill him. There was a day in history that the Jews tried to kill him. Now, as they tried to do that, the substitution theory says that Allah took the, 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 the face of Jesus, the likeness of Jesus, and he planted it on somebody else. And therefore the Jews took this other guy and they crucified him instead of Jesus. And God did take Jesus up into the third heaven and he is there for the last 2,000 years. And according to uh, Sunni Muslims, he will come just before the last day as a sign of the Qiyam, as a sign of the last day, he will come. And when he comes, he, you know, he will do many other things. He'll kill the pigs, he'll, he'll, he'll cross the, 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 um, the, the crucifix or, uh, and do all these things. And then he will eventually marry and he love children, he love our offspring. He will die and he will be buried next to the prophet in Medina. And therefore there is a tomb of Jesus awaiting him in Medina. That is according to the majority of the Muslims. So they hold on to the substitution theory. As for who is this person that died in the place of Jesus? Again, Muslim scholars that hold to this position have differed. Some have said it was Judas Iscariot. Others have said it was Simon Peter. Others have said it was one of the Jews. Others, especially in East Africa, would hold on to the fact that it was Simon of Cyrene. And so they are, these are the various positions that are advanced by the Muslim scholars. Now, on the other end, they are uh, Muslim scholars today, like Shabil Ali and uh, Imam Os Imran Hussein, who hold to the position that is contrary to this. They hold to a position that Jesus was put on the cross, that Jesus was indeed put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross. He swooned. 
he appeared to the Jews as if he had died. He fainted and they brought him down and, and eventually he was able to be rescued. Now, Imran Hussein may not hold to that extent of a person, but it does hold to the fact that indeed it was Jesus that was put on the cross, but God um, uh, later on took his soul not at the point of death, but he will come again before the last day. That is the position of Sheikh Imran Hussein. Sheikh Shabil Ali holds to, uh, 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 um, in my view, what appeared to be a position very similar to the Ahmadiyya sect of Islam. The Ahmadiyya Muslim, the Qadianis, uh, they don't like to be called the Qadianis, but they are Muslims that, um, you know, originated from India. The uh, a distinct sect in Islam in, in, in the way they hold to some position. Now, they say that Jesus, uh, what happened on the cross, that he fainted, he swooned, he appeared to these people that he had died. But in, in the actual sense, the disciples later took him down from the cross and they were able to help him escape. And he escaped to India, to Kashmir, India, in a place uh, uh, in, in, there in India, the Jesus, uh, this Jesus later on married and from his descendants is a man that was born. His name is Hamad uh, Gula Mirza. Ahmad Gula Mirsa, this is, you know, is the Jesus reincarnate. So Jesus is not coming back again. According to them, Jesus has already come in the person of Ahmad Mirsa. And, uh, and they say that at a later age, at about the, uh, 120 years old, Jesus died. He died of cholera and was buried in India. His grave is somewhere in Kashmir, India. Uh, uh, that place called Kadiani. And so this is the, the, the Ahmadiyya sect. That is the Ahmadiyya position in, in, in this regard. Thank you, uh, Samson, uh, Elder Samson. Thank you, Michelle and Vincent. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, uh, Daldalo and everybody else that is following. Now, so that, those are some of the positions that are being advanced by the Muslims. So it's actually the Muslims who are divided. The Quran in chapter 4, verse 157, which is what has brought confusion among the Muslim world. It says, <clears throat> because of their saying, Inna katalna Isa ibn Maryam, because of their saying that we have killed the, uh, the, the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, but they did not crucify him. They did not kill him. They did not crucify him. But so it was made to appear to them. Now, the various scholars have different aspects of what Shubi Allahum means. And, uh, and as you speak to various Muslims, you, you, you will get that understanding. But before we get to what the Quran actually says on this subject of, of, of Christ and his last days, let's, let me, allow me to take you back. Let me take you back a little bit to what the Quran says of the people that lived before Muhammad and of death. The Quran says, which is, the, the, the Bible may not agree with it, but this is what the Quran's position. It says, uh, every soul, every soul, kulul nafs, will test death. Now, according to Islam, even angels someday will die, even Jibril, even the angel of death himself, Malaikal mouth, will die someday. And Allah will remain alone. Quran chapter 28 says um, that everything will perish apart from the face of Allah. So everything will perish. Everything, according to Muslim scholars, will die apart from Allah. Now, that said, chapter 3, verse 145 says that no soul can die apart from Allah's, what Allah has willed and at the time that Allah has willed. 
Now I'm paraphrasing that. So a soul cannot de test death unless it is the time appointed for it by Allah. So every soul shall die. Now, what does the Quran say about the former prophets? Chapter 21, Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 7 and 8, it says very clearly, speaking to Muhammad, that no, we did not send a messenger before you, but men, ordinary men, they ate food, they, 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 they were ordinary human beings. And he says, and none of them was to live forever. None of them was to live forever. Verse 34 of Surah al -Anbiya, it says, No, we did not make any human being before you, O Muhammad, to live forever. No human being before Muhammad was to live forever. Now the question is, did Christ live after Muhammad or before Muhammad? Now, um, Michelle, we, uh, those of you guys that are all uh, following right now, if you want to come on, just write on the comment if you have a question. Uh, Vincent, if you have a question, anybody else, if you have a question and you want to come on the show, please write here, I'll send you a link and I can be able to take your question live on Facebook or live on, on YouTube, wherever you are following. So, and if you're Muslim following this, it is an opportunity for you also to uh, contribute. So Muslims will tell me that it is it was not possible for God, you know, in his, in his uh, mercy to allow his prophet to die such a death of a shameful death on the cross. Because the cross was, was, according to Quran, chapter 5, verse 33, was meant for the evil people. You know, the people who oppose the messengers of God. So how could um, God allow... Um, let me try to get Muhammad, uh, this guy, and see if he can actually come. So... They say it is not possible that God would allow such a prophet to, um, to, to, to die. Why? The reason they say he could not die is because. in his place somebody else who is not jesus was able to die uh, so those of you joining and uh have you accepted so quesera kennedy is asking have you accepted that jesus died but why are you still asking why all right i'm i am a christian i am a christian uh, kennedy i want you to understand me i am a christian i am interrogating what muslims say Muslims say that Jesus could not have died on the cross Marifa David thank you for joining so if you have a question if you want to uh, make a contribution as I said I can be able to accept your questions live on the show just let me know um, and you also if you don't want to, to appear on the show but you want to have a, uh, to leave a question or comment please uh, write your comment, write your question, I'll be able to share with you. And so I'm, I'm just interrogating the Quran and what it says, not necessarily because I believe in the message of the Quran anymore now, I do not, but I, 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 as a Christian, I am forced to also look at what other people 
belief. What does Islam say? Not what Muslims say. There's what Muslim says, but there's also what the Quran says. So the Quran is very clear. It's very clear. Chapter 21 and verse 7 and 8, that no prophet, perhaps I should read it. I have, uh, I have the Quran here with me. It says that we did not send a man before you, O Muhammad, uh, but they were human beings and none of them was to live forever. And, and, and so it is not, it's not uh, perhaps a new thing when, it, uh, when we talk about Jesus. And you may wonder, why are we not talking about the death of Ibrahim? Why are we not talking about uh, the death of Moses, Kalamullah, the man that spoke to God one on one? Why? Why Jesus? Why Jesus? Because it is at Jesus where there is the point of contention. And mark this, the Bible is very clear that if Jesus did not die and if he did not resurrect, then as Christians, we are the most miserable of men then our faith is in vain. That is what the Bible says. If he did not die, if he did not resurrect, then our faith is in vain. But the Bible again is clear that Jesus has died and he has risen from the death. But Muslims are objecting that. And they are saying that the Bible has been corrupted. It will be corrupted. That's why it has issues to do with the death of Jesus. But we are saying no. No, look at the Quran. The Quran does not oppose. Yes, Muslims oppose. In their understanding of the Quran, they would oppose. They, that's why they come up with all these theories, because they have not agreed. Okay, so Kennedy says, uh, uh, all right, I'll share with you my WhatsApp number, Ken. I will share with you my WhatsApp number and feel free to also uh, contact me. You feel free also to share. Um, just go on your YouTube, um, check on uh, Malim Chaka. Check on Malim Chaka there. You, we have, if you speak Swahili, we have a lot of uh, dialogues in Swahili and in English um, that you can be able to access on our channel. Um, but I also, if you also want to write to me via email, go ahead it is malim chaka malim chaka just as as my on on my my name on 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 uh, on facebook malim chaka at gmail.com malim chaka at gmail.com you can be able to get me directly um or you can also write to contact contact at malim chaka contact at malim chaka dot com contact at malimchaka.com. Those are, those are some of the ways you can get me. So I, I, I'm, I've been trying to get some of my Muslim friends if um, they can also give their contribution towards this topic. Now, let's go home. So when we see the Quran, the only chapter, the only verse is a single verse that Muslims would build their whole doctrine on the denial of Jesus' crucifixion. It is chapter 4, verse 157. Chapter 4, verse 157. That's the only one single verse in the entire Quran that Muslims would use to base, to reject the crucifixion of Jesus. But is that verse really denying the crucifixion of Jesus? In my view, no. In my view, it is the misunderstanding of Muslims when it comes to this subject. Were they to interrogate the Quran? Were they to, uh, to read the Quran soberly? then they would come to the very clear conclusion that I also came to, and many of us have come to, that indeed the Quran does not oppose to the idea that the man that was put on the cross on that day was not uh, none other than Christ himself. Because it is 600 years between Muhammad and the, the events in, in Jerusalem on that day. 
Yet the Quran should have been clear of what happened. But instead, the Quran is very ambiguous so that the Muslims today do not agree on exactly what happened. So if they're saying that Christians are in disagreement on what happened, can they tell us? Can a Muslim sincerely say that in the reading of the Quran, this is the conclusion, this is the clear of the clarity of what happened? No, the Quran is ambiguous because there are other places where you could read and clearly see that Jesus died. For example, chapter 3 and verse 55. The Quran is very saying, yeah, it's, oh Jesus, I will surely kill you. I will surely cause you to die. I will fulfill your days and then I will bring you to myself. That's what the Quran says. That is just one place. In chapter 5, verse 116, 117, he is not aware of what happened after him. If you're telling me that Jesus is in the third heaven today, he must be aware of what is happening. According to chapter 5, 116, on, on Yawmul Qiyamah, on the last day, he does not know what is happening. So how do you how are you how else are you able to explain these verses if indeed Christ was not crucified if indeed the man that was on on the cross was not Jesus then what you're saying is that the disciples of Jesus cannot cannot be uh, cannot be trusted why because the their message from the day of Pentecost onwards, their message was that the man on the cross was none other than Jesus. Listen to what they say in, in, in the book of Acts chapter two and verse 22 onwards. It says, Peter is, is actually speaking to, to, to the crowd, he's speaking to the uh, Jews 50 days, actually 50 days after the events of the crucifixion. And he's speaking to the majority and he's saying, this Jesus was a man who God, uh, uh, let me actually read it. Let me not paraphrase it. Let me uh, go ahead and get my Bible and read it. And, and it's sweet words that, G, uh, that Peter is speaking. And tell me why I should doubt these disciples. Why? What's the reason why I should doubt these disciples? Even when they were talking to him on the road to Emmaus, they said, you know, we thought that that man would be the Messiah. And today is the third day. Uh, and some women came from among us and they were telling us this and this. We thought, we thought that he, that man would have been the Messiah because they believed that in the, he is the one that had died. Listen to these words. It says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by, accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. It says, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross, but God raised him from the dead, free, uh, freeing him from the agony of death because it was, not in, it, was, it was impossible for death to keep him hold on him. It was impossible for death to keep hold on him. And so the disciples here are speaking to a crowd of people in Jerusalem, not in Mecca, not in Medina in the place where the events occur. And they say, you men of Israel, and listen to their response. What was the response of the people, of the people that were, of the Jews that had? Verse 42 says, they devoted themselves. Uh, it, says, it says, Peter replied, verse 38, Peter replied. Let me, let me, let me begin from verse 36. Therefore, all of you, Israel, be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to their heart and said, Oh, Peter, and to the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? 
Um, and Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. And listen to, 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 to this after, after the disciples tell them this. It says, uh, he says he, he pleaded with them to save themselves from this corrupt generation. Um, and he says in verse 41, and those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Oh my. 3,000 people, witnesses of the cross, witnesses of the events in Jerusalem. Jews, 3,000. Now, even if we were to doubt the message of, of, uh, of Matthew, and Luke, and Mark, and John. Ah, and by the way, John was at the uh, at the crucifixion. He was by the cross of Jesus, him and the mother of Jesus. And when Jesus looked at him and he, he saw the disciple whom he loved, and he saw them, his own mother, you know what he says? He says, mother, behold your son. He says, son, behold your mother. He spoke. In other words, the man that was on the cross spoke. It was Jesus himself. If there is a person that can tell who was on the cross, then it must be the, his own mother. His own mother confirmed that it was his son that was on the cross. Now, why would Jesus, why would Allah allow such a woman to go through tribulations of thinking that the man who, who, who was on the, on the cross was his son, yet it was a shabby, it was somebody that looked like him? Why? Why would God do that? It was because the person that was on the cross was indeed Jesus Christ. Now listen to uh, Acts chapter 3. I'll just read two more verses and I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. In, in, in Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter is speaking to the onlookers after he has healed a man. And the people are wondering, and, you know, what kind of, what, what is this that has uh, just happened? While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Common. And when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at, at us by, uh, as if by our own power and our godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our forefathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, who you handed over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let go. You disowned the only righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We witness of the, we are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man whom you see and now and know you was made strong. If Jesus, the name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you all see. Listen. The disciples of Jesus, whom the Quran bears witness that they were men that can that be, can be trusted. They had no other message but the message of the cross. Paul would attest and say, I know no one else but Christ and him crucified. It is him and him crucified. That is the Lord of glory. That is the author of right. That is the one they spoke about. They said, that man <laughs> was given by the foreknowledge of God. That is the man that we speak to you about. And the Quran does not oppose this. You cannot just base, base your own entire theology on Surah Al Nisa, verse 157, and in one verse denounce everything that God has done in history. Everything that God did from the beginning was supposed to point to the cross of the Messiah, to the death of the Messiah and his resurrection. That's why the, 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 the prophets of old spoke about it. Psalm 22 speaks very clearly, depicts a very good picture. Zechariah 13 and verse 7, hmm, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. God says, 
Arise, O sword, against a man that is my own companion. Strike the, uh, the, 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 the shepherd, and the, uh, and the sheep will be scattered. Speaking exactly, exactly of what would happen. And the Bible says that at that moment, the disciples were scattered. The rain, although they, of course, walked right back, some of them, like Peter, followed. He denied, he did, I, I do not know that man. And they told him, even you are speaking. It's as if you, you've been with that man. Friends, what am I saying? If Christ did not die, if he did not resurrect, if he is not risen from the dead, then our message is in vain. But thank God that he is risen. The firstborn from among the dead. He is risen. He is no longer on the cross. And that is why he is able to be our high priest. Now, to my Muslim friends, I only have one appeal to you. Go back to your sources. There is no way God can bring verses that are contradicting, verses that, are, that, 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 that continue to you know, to bring doubt. And that's why the Muslims in the world today cannot agree on this subject. We, Jesus cannot have one tomb, in, an empty tomb in Jerusalem, another tomb in, in Kashmir, India, another empty tomb in Medina waiting for him. It cannot be. Somebody has brought confusion. And I will tell you, the devil does not want the message of the risen Lord. He is opposed to the message of the risen Lord because he knows that it is in the resurrection that he was defeated. It is in the message of the cross, of the cross that he was defeated. He thought that by putting him on the cross, by nailing him on the cross, he had finished it. But alas, <laughs> the resurrection was here. The resurrection came. And that's why I believe chapter 3, verse 54, 55, is speaking about the resurrection. The fact that he died and was raised from the dead. And through that, he defeated the enemy. God bless you. Have yourself a very wonderful day. Uh, for those of you who want my contacts, I'll come and give you my WhatsApp uh, contacts. Um, please feel free to get in touch with me. Um, actually, I should be able to share that with you. Just get, get in touch with me on the inbox. I'll be able to inbox you and give you uh, any other details. Thank you so much. God bless you and have yourself a very wonderful uh, evening, a very wonderful afternoon, a very wonderful uh, night, wherever uh, in the globe you are watching from and following. God bless you until another time. We continue with our series on Muhammad. If you have not seen those series, please go ahead and, 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 and check on the YouTube, check on my uh, Facebook link, links. We have been doing a series from pre-Islamic Arabia to the time of Prophet Muhammad and now to the period of, of Medina, Yathrib, looking at the message of the Quran, looking at the seerah of the Prophet uh, as we seek to understand the message of the Quran. It is important especially for my Christian brothers, it is important for you to get to understand the message of the Quran before you are actually able to judge this man. This is what the disciples did. This is what the, the, the Christians in the days of Muhammad did. They came and listened to him before rejecting his message. They came and listened to him. They followed keenly to him. They were like the Beroya Christians. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Seek to understand. God bless you until another time. Assalamu alaikum, salamun lakum, God bless you, shalom, shalom, shalom.